me now is a copier. This is formed out of the rock type, which is granite. It used to be under layers of other sediment, possibly other rocks. As those have eroded and weathered away, we're left with this spectacular structure. This is a form of what's called pressure release or even dilation, where the weight from above has now gone. This rock that was formerly compressed has now expanded under the new conditions and lines of weakness have formed where it's kind of stressed as it's expanded. And along those specific lines of weaknesses are where weathering will occur. So copiers, they are formed by granite. So let's imagine we've got some granite underground and we've got all of those processes happening in the soil with acidic conditions. And that soil will eventually weather over thousands of years. So that copia is getting affected, weathered by those differences until eventually we end up with the copier being exposed to the elements and those process of weathering causes lines of weaknesses to be exposed. More chemical weathering, especially hydrolysis, will occur within them until you get these really dramatic copier formations that you, know, you famously see leopards and lions standing on in somewhere like the Serengeti. There is also, to an extent, some dilation, or as it's also known, pressure release. Because this regolith is a technical term for all of the rocks and soil above, has now weathered, that weight, that pressure has now been released. So much like a sponge when it's kind of compressed, it can then expand now as that weight and pressure has released. Again, that can form certain lines of weaknesses to be exposed and crack, leaving again this fantastic structure of copiers. This rock in front of us is a great example of biological weathering. We are by the sea, so obviously we get seabirds. They want to roost or perch somewhere away from predators, so this rocky headland here is a great example for that and they do what animals do and they poo. There's a special name for bird poo which is guano and over many many years of hundreds maybe thousands of birds pooing on this it is a form of biological weathering because bird poo has a very low pH around pH 3, 3.5 full of acids such as uric acid and over time that weathers rocks. Check out this fantastic example of biological weathering. We can see the tree at the top of this banking and its roots stretching meters below into the rock. And we can see how it's almost strangling the rock there and causing weaknesses in the rock to be exposed until eventually rocks like this which are relatively loose, will fall out as part of that biological weathering process. I'm in southwest Australia right now. This isn't true desert, but still in summer, they can reach temperatures in excess of 40 degrees, but then the evening temperature will fall down to around 20 degrees. So even though we're not in the desert, if we look around, there's strong evidence that it gets hot and dry here from the wildfires. You can see all of that burnt dead vegetation. We are now in spring, so you can see there's quite a bit more greenery. That will soon go, the temperatures will increase, and the rock we can see here shows evidence of exfoliation. This is when the outer layer of the rock heats up, it expands, during the daytime, during those very high temperatures, and then at night time, those lower temperatures, the outer layer contracts. That stress of expansion and contraction, those cycles that repeat again and again and again over years and years, 
causes the outer layer to weather or to peel. So it's often exfoliation is referred to as onion skin weathering. So we can see here where the outer layer has peeled. And this is something that happens only when there's a high diurnal temperature range. That means high daily temperature range. So it doesn't matter how hot or how cold it is. What matters is that temperature range, the difference between the maximum daytime temperature and the minimum nighttime temperature. And you'll see that many of the rocks here have that characteristic circular shape, which happens generally through exfoliation. How to draw the process of exfoliation. So all we need to do is draw our rock, okay. show that it is daytime and that it is expanding. Okay. Simple. And then all we need to do, show it's night time, draw the rock and show the opposite, that there is contraction. Okay. And then obviously in your explanation, your written explanation, you are going to say that this process like everything in physical geography, repeats itself again and again and again until the outer layer, layer peels off. That's why it's often informally called onion skin weathering. Very, very simple. Put this bottle of water into the freezer, come back in a few hours and see what changes we notice. So notice how originally there's a bit of a gap of air at the top. You can now see that it's expanded significantly. Yeah, I can only put my finger to about there in the water bottle. And the shape of it has obviously expanded as well. How to draw freeze-thaw weathering. All we have to do is draw a rock that's kind of like Pac-Man. Show that it's daytime and there is water entering that crack. Next, show it's nighttime. Let's draw our Pac Man again and we want to label that with ice, but also that there has been expansion. You know, we can notice the ice has expanded, that is approximately 9%. Okay. We then, in our written explanation, want to mention that this repeats itself again and again and again until eventually we end up with our rock splat split in half, which we can call frost shattering. So daytime, water enters it. Nighttime, expansion because it turns to ice. We need many, many cycles of this and then that results in frost shattering. It's completely broken a piece of rock away from the original part.